In the first part of this series, we looked at the seven-year tribulation period as defined in Daniel chapter 9 and found that the Antichrist is revealed at the beginning of that seven-year period. So now let's go forward and look at the definition of the rapture itself. We'll pull up Esword and take a look at 1 Thessalonians 4 and 5. In 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, we find the definition of the uh, rapture. So let me go down to the coming of the Lord section here, which is uh, verses 13 through 18. Let's just read that. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, so those people that have died in Messiah, that you sorrow not, even as others who have no hope. If you've died not being a Christian, there's no hope for you. If you've died believing in Messiah, then you, you have eternal life. So he wants to make sure that we don't uh, weep for those people that are not uh, damned, those that are saved. So there's a difference there. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which are asleep in Jesus, or that have died being believers, will God bring with him. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord. And this is a a quote basically out of John 14 where Jesus was talking about I come back uh, for you because I go to prepare a place for you. But he's saying this not by his own authority but by the word of Jesus. Jesus actually said this. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will not prevent them which are asleep. Now that's old English. It doesn't mean stop them but proceed in other words. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of, of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord, therefore comfort one another with these words. So this is supposed to be a, a comfort. If you have a loved one that's a Christian and they've died, you will see them again in the resurrection. And so notice here it says uh, caught up together. This is the word harpazo in Greek, and it refers to being snatched away, or as the old Hebrew idiom has, coming out of the midst. Um, and we should see that in a, a study in this series. So this is the definition of the rapture. It doesn't tell us when it's going to happen, but just that it happens. So somewhere along the line there is a resurrection, and a rapture. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 that it all happens in the twinkling of an eye, the rapture resurrection. This is where people stop though and they're lost as opposed to what's going on. We have to realize that these epistles were not originally divided into chapters and verses. So he talks about morality in the first part, the coming of the Lord in the second. We need to continue and go into chapter 15 to see what the difference is. So let's go ahead and go into the next chapter. Uh, let me flip over my Bible here and go to chapter 5. So, wherefore comfort one another with these words, the fact that we will be caught up when the resurrection happens and we'll be back together with our family. So when does this happen? He continues this saying, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write to you. So if there's no need, that means you already know everything about this. The times and the seasons, he's talking about the Moedim. So just as the spring festivals pointed to Messiah coming at a certain time, dying as a Passover lamb, and the ritual pointed to what would happen and when it would happen, so the fall festivals point to the second coming and other things, so you know how they happen and in what order and those type of things. So if you have those memorized, uh, you should understand this, and there's no need that we go back over it again, he says. By the way, we have a book called Ancient Messianic Festivals that goes through all the details of those. But to continue on, he says, You have no need that I write to you about the times and the seasons, for you yourselves know perfectly well that the day of the Lord, and we've talked about that in a previous video, the day of the Lord is that seven-year tribulation period, the seven years right before the second coming. So you all know perfectly well that that day of the Lord, that seven-year tribulation period, comes as a thief in the night. Now what he means by that is unexpectedly. People that are expecting the rapture, the second coming, the tribulation, the Antichrist, 
are Christians. People that aren't Christians don't believe in it, and they're not expecting it. So when it actually does happen, they're going to be very surprised. So the day comes as a thief in the night, unexpectedly. For when they, unbelievers, say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So it's just like birth pangs. You're fine one minute, and all of a sudden, instantly it hits you. And so the same idioms are used here, meaning that same thing. We know in the book of Revelation, during that day of the Lord, that seven-year period, uh, a good half or three-quarters of the population of the planet is wiped out. So that's a major devastation. Uh, so that's what we're talking about. So that day comes as a thief on those that don't believe. Okay. So what about us believers? He goes on and says in verse, five, verse 4, But ye brethren... So all of you guys out there, and believers, the brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake us as a thief. Since we're looking for the rapture and the tribulation and the Antichrist and the second coming and the kingdom, we're looking for all those prophecies to be fulfilled. It's not going to overtake us as a thief. Now, if we were still here, whether we were expecting it or not, we're still going to be part of that destruction if we're here. So if it doesn't overtake us and destroy us, it's because we're not here. And he says this very clearly, that ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Let us watch and be sober, seriously realizing this is coming and prepare for it witnessing to people as you can before that day approaches. For they that sleep in the night, and they uh, sleep, sleep in the night, they that are drunken are drunken in the night. Let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for the helmet, the hope of salvation. Now notice what he says here. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, some people will say this is talking about saved people don't go to hell because they are saved by Jesus, which is absolutely true. But in context, he's talking about the day of the Lord coming as a thief in the night on unbelievers and total destruction comes. But that wrath, which that's the wrath of God, isn't going to be poured out on believers because uh, we are not appointed to wrath, but we're, we will be saved from that particular wrath. So in context, we're talking about the seven-year period. So as we see here, he's saying in chapter 4, there's going to be a rapture. In chapter 5, he's talking about the rapture occurring before that seven-year period, the day of the Lord occurs, because we're not appointed to that particular wrath. So that's our study for this as far as the definition goes. Now we'll, we'll look at other studies, and we'll get to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And when we do... We'll see the exact timing yet again in chapter 2, and it'll make it very, very clear. We'll go on in, in the series and talk about Old Testament passages, uh, early church fathers that believed in a pre-trib rapture, and we'll also talk about um, ancient scrolls, Dead Sea Scrolls and the like that teach a pre-trib rapture. So stay tuned. Thank you.